One of our beautiful Marian windows here at St. Mary's is Our Lady of Knock. The apparition of Our Lady of Knock occurred on August 21st, 1879 at the Church of St. John the Baptist in the village of Knock, County Mayo, Ireland. Like most apparitions, it's very helpful to understand the circumstances and the situations surrounding the time and place where the apparition occurred. County Mayo at that time was probably the poorest area in all of Ireland. For over 300 years, they had been subjected to repression and all kinds of impoverishment. In the 1600s, all Catholics were forced to move to the west of Ireland, and they inhabited and overpopulated Mayo and other surrounding counties. In the 1700s, penal laws were put into place in an attempt to eradicate the Catholic faith from Ireland. And in the 1800s, the Great Famine occurred, and subsequent famines occurred just prior to the apparition of our Blessed Mother. Over this period of time, millions and millions of Irish had either emigrated or perished. It was a very desperate time, very impoverished people. And in some respects, hope was kind of thin at that time. August 21st was a very rainy day in County Mayo, and particularly in the hamlet of Knock. As night approached, the sky grew darker, the winds picked up, the rain became more depressing, and it was just a night people didn't go out. One Mary Biern, however, did go out to lock up the church at night. And as she left the church, she noticed a light on the back wall of the church outside. And she noticed some statues, but she really took no notice and just went home. A short time later, Mary McLaughlin, who was the priest housekeeper, did the same. She walked by the back of the church. She noticed the light. She noticed statues. But she carried on and went to visit Margaret Bierne. After a while, Mary McLaughlin said, I'm going. And Mar Margaret's sister Mary said, I'll walk you home. They passed the church again. And Mary McLaughlin says, oh, look at the statues our priest bought, our pastor. He must have bought them from Dublin. But Mary Byrne wasn't so sure, and she began to approach the statues and noticed they moved. And that set off what was the apparition. Mary Byrne raced home to her mother and her sister and her brother and called them out, and they called others in the parish. And soon there were 14 people assembled before the apparition of our Blessed Mother. Let's take a look at what that apparition really looked like. There is a, the original St. John the Baptist Church. There is an extension of uh, basically a glass church over the statues that from the rear of the uh, St. John's church. St. Joseph, the Blessed Mother, and St. John the Apostle, also the Evangelist. There was an altar and a, a lamb standing on the altar with a cross behind him and six angels in flight around the altar. The 14 witnesses ranged from 5 to 74 years old. And there was utter amazement, and one of the younger ones went to touch one of the statues, and they moved, just so they could not be touched. Now, so one way, the next thing one would ask is, why so much? What is this telling us? Mary, in this situation, her hands are extended. I think if you look at the other windows in St. Mary's, her hands are clasped in prayer or else she's holding the Jesus or to her heart. This is most unusual. Her hands also point up to the air. They don't point or open up to the people. They point up to heaven. Mary here is wearing a golden crown with a red rose in the base of the crown. 
So one of the symbols is this altar, the Lamb of God, what St. John the Baptist from this church calls the Lamb of God in all four Gospels. The Lamb of God perhaps represents the Last Supper. Lamb was a part of the Passover feast, the cross representing the crucifixion, the rose, the resurrection. So we have the Last Supper, the crucifixion, and the resurrection. Why Joseph and why St. John with Mary? First, Joseph. Joseph loved Mary. They were husband and wife. He was the foster father of Jesus. He mentored Jesus. He helped raise Jesus. He loved Jesus and both Mary, but he was no longer with us. Mary, on the other hand, in the Jewish tradition, it was the responsibility of this oldest son to make sure that his mother would be taken care of by her cousin, a relation, or some form of care when the husband died and there was no one left to care for her. So that was for the responsibility of Jesus. And on the cross, one of the seven last words is, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. And to his beloved disciple, he said, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. So there's something there that Jesus is taking care of his mother, who is at risk with no one to care for her. And possibly she's looking to heaven in gratitude, in praise, and in reverence for what Jesus has done, and telling the Irish that Jesus will take care of them also. He took care of her, he will take care of them. They had remained faithful to God, they had remained faithful to their church throughout all these travesties they experienced. And she's telling the Irish, carry on. Jesus loves you and Jesus will care for you for the rest of your days. Our St. Mary, Lady of Knock, she's clothed in a white garment. She wears the gold crown. Her arms are extended out, and as we saw in the statue at Knock, one arm is pointed up, and the second arm holds the Celtic cross to remind us of the crucifixion of her son. One noticeable feature of Mary in our window here in St. Mary's is that she's not facing up to heaven as she is in Knock. Rather, she's facing toward our altar where we celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass, the Supper of the Lamb, the crucifixion, the resurrection of our Lord, and that is our pathway to heaven. So she's maybe showing us that through our altar, through our sacrifice, through our service, we will go up to heaven. And she lets us know that she is with us, that she is giving her blessing and her love to us, the same blessing and love that Jesus gives to us and the Lord. Mm -hmm.